Well, what's up again there, guys? Brian here, D3 Topics Game, here to share with you another one of my top 10 list videos to share with you guys today. Now, just to act as a follow up video to my last top 10 list videos where I, you know, named my top 10 favorite PlayStation 2 games and then PlayStation 3 games, I figured, well, let's just keep it simple and keep the train going and jump right into my top 10 favorite PlayStation 4 games. Now, I have to say, I had a hard time coming up with this list. The PlayStation 4, for many, is probably one of, if not the best era of PlayStation in terms of gaming library qualities. And I, I personally feel PlayStation 2 and 3 is a little bit better, but if some people think that the PlayStation 4 is their favorite era of PlayStation games, I completely understand because this was a phenomenal era for PlayStation. I would say slightly behind PlayStation 2, probably one of the most successful eras in PlayStation history. And it had an incredible lineup of games, both exclusive and multi-platforms to choose from. So if you do happen to enjoy my top 10 list video by the end, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to track me on my future videos. And remember, if you guys have any ideas for future top 10 list videos or ranking videos or tier list videos or just discussion videos in general, please let me know in the comments down below and I will try to get them up as soon as I can. So without uh, wasting any more time, I do want to happen to mention a few honorable mentions because this list was incredibly competitive. All of the members of the top 10 are nothing short of 9s and 10s. There's two 10s, uh, maybe a couple 9.5s, and the rest of them are 9. There are no 8s or 8.5s, so this was a very, very difficult list to put together. But a couple of honorable mentions that just couldn't, that were close but couldn't quite make the list are games in the forms of something like Titanfall 2, which personally I believe we should, definitely should have gotten a Titanfall 3 because this game is phenomenal. Something like Ratchet and Clank almost got there but it is technically kind of just a remake of an older version so there isn't much to creativity but it is a good updated version of a classic game so i love it but eh, this it gets a little too much from an older game and ghost of tsushima phenomenal game i cannot wait for them to announce the second game however I do think it does play a little bit better on the playstation 5 version even though this was originally made for the playstation 4 but yeah very very close but Unfortunately, they were 10 out of the games I did I would pick over this game, so that's why it made it out. So uh, let's start the list off with number 10. Okay, starting off with number 10 is a game that I'm sure not many people would have talked about, but I, I had a blast with this game, and that is Remedies Control. This game visually is probably one of the most impressively visual games that has a unique world set of building that I've encountered for some time. Um, I think your the main protagonist or heroine is a very endearing character. I absolutely love the amount of visual design that this game had there are just some impressive visuals i think the enemy design is actually quite creative i think that it has a lot of rpg elements and anytime you're able to smoothly inter the you know, integrate RPG elements into your games, even if it's not the typical genre, is always a major plus to me. I think the story is great, and it also kind of mixes with the whole aesthetic of world that Remedy Studios has been making that kind of connects it to games like, uh, you know, Alan Wake, and I think there's some elements of Max Payne that are even mentioned in this game, so I kind of like how they're making this kind of cinema, like, like, game sin not, not a cinematic universe, but kind of like a game universe, from different genres that have like some elements that are connecting. I think that that from Remedy Studios is something that I think is really, really creative. But yeah, on its own, Control is a great game that I don't think gets enough credit. And I hope we do get a sequel because it did leave off on a pretty solid note. So yeah, I gotta give Control as the number 10 spot on my list. Going into number nine is gonna have to go to probably one of the best first person shooter games I have ever played in the form of Doom Eternal. Now 2016's Doom was probably the first game that I had played in a about a decade. I think the last one I had played before that was probably Doom 3, but it was like a slightly updated ver like it's like a slightly updated version on PC, which was kind of horror based, which I had a lot of fun playing. But this one really took everything that Doom 2016 did and just cranked it up a little bit more. This is classic Doom. This is easily pick up and just start killing demons action fun. Uh, it, it it hardly ever slows down. I think the story went a little bit more into the actual lore. We got to know a little bit more about the Doom Slayer and the situation definitely got elevated to another level now that a lot of these demons had actually made it to earth and i believe the final boss fight was probably one of the toughest that i had experienced in doom's histories which is why it was absolutely worthy of being the number nine spot on my list going into number eight is a game that recently captured the title of being my all-time favorite star wars game of all time in the form of star wars jedi's fallen order yes i would still say this is a bit better 
than Jedi Survivor, and yes, it was able to dethrone Star Wars Battlefront 2, the OG Battlefront 2, as being my new favorite Star Wars game of all time. This is definitely some of the best content that we've gotten in the Disney Star Wars era. I think it is completely filled with the films, it is completely filled in the TV shows, but I think when it comes to the gaming department, I certainly think that they've been a lot more successful. I think Cal Kestis is definitely my new favorite character in the new Disney Star Wars era. I think his character development was absolutely incredible. I think BD-1 is probably my new favorite droid buddy, so much so that I actually have my own personal BD-1 on top of my television set when I game, so I think that's really cool. I think that this was able to capture a lot of Souls elements. Then that's a tip, and that's a style of gameplay that I don't, I'm not really a big fan of, so I don't play games like uh you know like bloodborne or or, or souls or uh what's, what's the one that just came out like recently um i can't even remember what it was called but it won game of the year but like this kind of feels like that but for star wars and i think that the amount of challenge that it presides is just hard enough that it's that i push through but i don't get frustrated to the point where i quit so I, I give this game a lot of credit for being able to pull that off, which is why I happily place it as number eight spot on my list. Going into number seven is easily going to go down in history as being in my top 10 favorite PlayStation exclusive franchises of all time in the form of Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes, I do think Zero Dawn story-wise is a little bit better than Forbidden West, although I do think Forbidden West has slightly better game mechanics, but I do think the story, which is what I like the most, is definitely a little bit better in Zero Dawn. I think Aloy is a fantastic protagonist. Not woke in any sense, but like like if you want to create like there's so many com people complaining how there aren't enough strong female characters. This is kind of how you build a strong female character without having to say that they're a female character. The character development for Aloy is absolutely incredible. I think the world dynamic of explaining exactly how the world came apart and how it was rebuilt through the Zero Dawn program I thought was absolutely incredible. I think the cast of characters around Aloy are very well realized. They're very in-depth and to see them grow, develop and grow even more in Forbidden West was a joy. Um, easily one of the best new franchises we've ever had and by far the best series that Guerrilla Games has ever created. I would certainly take Horizon over Killzone any day, which is why it takes the number seven spot on my list. All right, going into number six. Competition is about to really, really crank up and taking the number six spot on my list has to go to the greatest Devil May Cry game of all time in the form of Devil May Cry 5. This is definitely the best Devil May Cry game Ever made with its PlayStation 5 variant being a member of my 10 out of 10 club and actually being the first 10 out of 10 game that came out for the PlayStation 5. I definitely would prefer the PlayStation 5 version just because I think that the gameplay was a lot more smoother. I think the visuals were better and you could play as Virgil, which trust me, anytime you add Virgil is a major plus to me. But I think on its own, the original version is still an incredible game. This managed to take every single flaw I'd had with the franchise and fix them. You have three different unique campaigns that all feel different. You have three different characters that all get focused in the forms of Nero, V, and Dante. It has a great set of story dynamics that have them cross and go in separate paths. And I think that the overall story and character development of all the characters is really great. I think the stakes are very much cranked up. I love the soundtrack. The soundtrack in Devil May Cry games has always been a major plus. The combat system is great. The enemy variation, the enemy variation is very, very unique for each individual character. And I think that keeps the game fresh, which is why, yeah, Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition is the best Devil May Cry game ever made without a question. All right, going into number five, I'm going to have to give it to Uncharted 4, which is the conclusion to the Uncharted franchise. And a lot of people consider this to be their favorite Uncharted game perfectly understand, but I think it's only slightly behind Uncharted 2, simply because I do not like the final boss fight. I don't know, I don't like how it was handled in this game, but everything up to that point was absolutely incredible. This is definitely, gameplay-wise, the most fun Uncharted game to play. It is the most visually impressive uh, Uncharted game. It certainly has the best, like, action set pieces of any Uncharted game, but again, it's just the ending that I just, the final boss fight that holds it back. Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 4 are dead even and a number of areas with this taking a number of advantage, but that ending just almost doesn't work. However, I do like the ending of when uh, the what happens after the final battle. I do like how this is a conclusive ending of the Uncharted franchise. I do not want them to come back because I do not want an Uncharted 4 or Uncharted 5. I don't want them to reboot it. I want them to retire this franchise and move on to other franchises. Uncharted 4, great game. 
almost a masterpiece. Certainly one of the best PlayStation 4 games of all time, and I know that a lot of people really love this game, but yeah, it's going to take the number five spot on my list. Okay, going on to number four, we have easily the best, in my opinion, still, best Spider-Man game that I've ever played in the form of Marvel's Spider-Man. Now, at the time of this recording, I would just like to say right now that I could not finish Spider-Man 2, Marvel, Marvel Spider-Man 2. Um, I didn't like it. I couldn't finish it. I quit. I gave up on the game. And when they eventually do release uh, Spider-Man 3, I have no intentions on playing it. But this still remains the best Spider-Man game I've ever played. And in some cases could be argued as being the best comic book video game ever made. Um, this is easily one of the best interpretations of Spider-Man that I've ever seen. Only behind the original animated Spider-Man series that came out in the 90s and Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. Those two I would still hold a little bit above this different version. I absolutely love the web swinging, the combat system, the storytelling, the RPG elements. Everything works in this game. Absolutely flawless. 9.5 out of 10. Slightly outside 10 out of 10, but yeah, this phenomenal game. Uh, which is why I love it so much, which is why it's number four on my list. <laughs> Taking the number three spot on my list, very, very, it was very, very hard to not give this a 10 out of 10, but it's just slightly made it out, but its sequel did make it into the top 10 out of 10, and that is in the form of God of War 4. This game was far better than I ever thought it could have been. I mean, when I saw the first trailer for this and the first set of gameplay and saw how vastly different it was from the OG style of God of War games, I really did not think it could work. And much to my shock, it ended up working. I mean, I've never experienced a franchise that did a complete overall. It changed everything of that makes its franchise what it is and somehow managed to not only work, but actually surpass the original format and a number of key elements. I absolutely love the father and son dynamic between Kratos and Atreus. I love the storytelling. I love the RPG elements. The comm system absolutely works once you get used to it, to the point where it makes it a little bit difficult to go back to the OG style. However, I, I can do it in certain games. Um, I love the ending. I love the humor. I love the serious moments. I love the storytelling. I love the lore that it goes into. And it is a great setup for what happens in God of War Ragnarok, which is an even better game than this one, even though it's not a vastly superior game because they just take a lot of these elements that are in this game and just add them, copy and paste them in the next game and just modify them a little bit, but it's more or less the same. But that doesn't stop this game from still being a phenomenal game and only slightly outside of the 10 and a half 10 club, but still. I was very surprised at how much I love this game, which is why it's number three on my list. All right, going into number two and the first entry in my top 10, 10 out of 10 legendary club for the PlayStation 4 is going to have to go to Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, I stated in my PlayStation 3 top 10 list video that the reboot of Tomb Raider was really the game that actually made me a fan, but it was really this one that elevated it up to a 10 out of 10 level. I'll even go so far as to say this. I definitely would pick this game over any Uncharted game. And the primary reason I would do that is because while the Uncharted franchise is great, it kind of runs on a linear format. While this is much more open world and expansive, and therefore I had a lot more time playing this game than any Uncharted game. I absolutely love the RPG elements that they added. Again, as I stated earlier in this video, anytime you manage to include RPG elements and manage them to work in a genre of gaming that is not used to having RPG elements, it is a major plus. I think Laura's character development in this game is absolutely phenomenal. She absolutely becomes a legendary Tomb Raider that, heck, we've come to know her as, or I would say the OG fans have come to know her for. They definitely give her a lot more depth. She goes through a lot more heartbreak. Some crazy things happen. There's some crazy cinematic moments in this game, and it 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 just does everything perfectly. I mean, I, I, I play this so much, so I go back and I play this at least once a year. That's how much I love this game, which is why it is absolutely worthy of being a member of my 10 out of 10 club. But unfortunately, that leaves it only in the second place. And there's only one game that manages to top Tomb Raider or Rise of the Tomb Raider as being my number one favorite PlayStation 4 game of all time. All right, taking the number one spot and my favorite PlayStation 4 game of all time in a member of, and pretty high member of the 10 out of 10 club is gonna have to go to Persona 5 Royal. Now, Persona 5, it was already a great game. That would have that would have made this list, but it would have been like a 9.5. But Royal managed to add slight modifications, slight additions, different story elements, and expansions that I didn't expect, and that allowed it to be pushed to being not only one of 
the best JRPG games of all time. Probably my second favorite JRPG game of all time, below only Final Fantasy X, but the best PlayStation 4 game I've ever played, and just another reason as to why JRPGs will probably always remain my favorite genre of gaming. I think this was absolutely fantastic. Anyone who's interested in being introduced in the Persona franchise, you have to play this. Everything about this. The visuals are incredible. The character development is incredible. The side activities are incredible. They encourage you to explore and just do just fun activities with your friends and allies in order to build up your relationships. The combat system is exactly my favorite of any JRPG game. I love the turn-based system. I know that some people kind of like the real-time story, so it allows you to keep on your toes, so you have to constantly keep thinking, but I think that the turn-based style allows me to kind of plan and strategize a little bit more so there's less pressure, but heck, it doesn't make it any less challenging. I think that the character dynamics allows them to each have strengths and advantages, and knowing when to use them in certain battles is absolutely key. The soundtrack is absolutely incredible. It is easily in my top five favorite video game soundtracks of all time. And it's just a blast to play. I think out of any PlayStation 4 game, I've probably spent the most amount of time playing this game than any other PlayStation 4 game, and that includes games that have multiplayer. So for all those reasons, that is why Persona 5 Royal is easily my top number one favorite PlayStation 4 game of all time. So now that you guys know my list, I'd like to know what would you guys say are your 10 favorite PlayStation 4 games of all time? Let me know your list in the comments down below. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome, and I'll see you next time.